Dear colleagues, today I'll present you the Restricted Kinematic Alignment Protocol and we will review some cases together. I am Pascal André Venditoli. I'm a full professor of surgery at University of Montreal and orthopedic surgeon at Hôpital Maisonneuve Rosemont in Montreal, Canada. I am a founder of the Personalized Arthroplasty Society and today I'll present you some cases examples of the restricted kinematic alignment protocol. First, I'll start by describing what is a kinematic alignment. It is a true resurfacing of the knee joint. So by removing an amount of bone and cartilage, you want to replace it with the same thickness. It's a personalized surgical technique where the objective is to reproduce the pre-arthritic knee anatomy. By reproducing pre-arthritic anatomy, we should question ourselves, is there some limits? What is the normal anatomy? And to what extent it is compatible with long-term implant survivorship? We all know there are some pathological anatomy which may not be favorable to replicate. From a group of uh, 4,800 uh, patients scheduled for total knee arthroplasty, we evaluate the number of cases where there was some of these extreme anatomies. In about 70%, there was a distal femur mechanical angle of more than five degree. And on the tibial side was 19%, resulting in a large HK variation with 19% above five degree and 3% above 10 degrees. That's why in 2011, I described the restricted kinematic alignment protocol where we want to maintain the hip knee ankle angle within plus or minus three degrees and to restrict the femoral and tibial bone cut to a maximum of five degree orientation in valgus or varus. Since 2011, I performed more than a thousand total neoarthroplasty using that protocol, and we published some paper reporting the result of this technique. This is the restricted kinematic alignment algorithm. It is very simple to follow, and during the current presentation, we'll review some cases and go through that uh, simple protocol. There are multiple ways to perform kinematic alignment total knee arthroplasty. However, if you want to use the restricted kinematic alignment protocol, it is better to have a direct feedback of the patient anatomy, either during surgery or in the pre-op period with the personalized instruments. These two tools will allow you to decide exactly on the post-operative alignment that you want to achieve. Here's the first example. It's a man of 57 years old with a right virus knee. As you can see, his pre-op measurement on the long film is a three degree virus with a, a, a distal femur of three degree valgus and a proximal tibia of three degree virus. If we follow the algorithm, the MPTA and LDFA of this patient are below five degree or equal, two degree valgus for femur, three degree virus for tibia. So we can follow the algorithm and then the combination of the femur and the tibia produce combined HK of less than three degree. So no adjustment need to be performed during surgery, you are performing a true kinematic alignment procedure. And this is happening in about 50% of the cases. Now let's have a look at a restricted kinematic alignment protocol in a severe valgus case. This is a woman of 82 years old with a right and left lower limb in the valgus. Right lower limb is much more painful. So you see her HK is 17 valgus pre-op. 
the LDFA 9 degree valgus and MPTA 2 degree virus. Let's follow the algorithm. We have a MPTA which is 3 degree, which is, falls into our uh, boundaries, and the LDFA is 9 degree valgus. So we need to adjust this distal femur of 9 degree to 5 degree maximum according to our boundaries. Then if we continue, we're combining LDFA plus MPTA, 5 valgus plus 3 virus equals 2 degree HK. In this case, we need to make minor adjustment and this corresponds to about 30% of the cases during total knee procedure with the RK protocol. This is the post-op radiograph. You can see here we achieved our goal with a HK of 2 degree valgus post-op, LDFA of 5 degree valgus, and MPTA of 3 degree virus. There was no femoral rotation in, applied to the implant, and we had to do limited pie crusting of the, of the posterolateral corner capsule to balance the knee because of the minor adjustment we had to do on the LDFA. As you can see with the femur in neutral rotation, we achieved a perfect patellar tracking centered in, into the trochlea. And in this severe valgus case in a elderly woman with the K principles, we can use a non-cemented implant on the lateral view. You see the nice fit of the femoral component because we didn't change much her anatomy. So we have a perfect alignment of the condyles and the anterior part of the trochlea. Now let's see a case of RKA for a severe virus patient. This is a man of 73 years old with a left lower limb in severe virus, 25 degree, with a bone loss on the tibial side and probably on the femoral side. In this case, you can see the, that the LDFA is two degree valgus, so it falls within the boundaries. MPTA, 10 degree virus, severe deformity in this case. So according to our algorithm, we need to adjust that MPTA, bring it down to a maximum of five degree virus. Combination of five degree virus plus two degree valgus will lead to a HK of three degree. So again, we are making some minor adjustment to produce post-op HK that will fall within the safety of plus or minus three degree HKA. This is the post-op film for this patient. Our final HKA is three degree virus, the LDFA three degree valgus, and the MPTA six degree virus measured on the, the film. Slight difference according to our goal of five, and this is often seen with the current technique we have. We are plus or minus one degree of precision. We had to do only a deep MCL release alone in this case. So no release of the pesan serine, no release of the superficial MCL. And this case was perfectly balanced after a correction of about four degree of the tibial virus. Now let's see a case of restricted kinetic alignment for unique compartmental arthroplasty revision. This is a woman of 60 years old who had uh, both knee operate with uh, UK two years ago. As you can see, our pre-op alignment was near neutral with 0.5 degree virus, LDFA of 90 degree and MPTA of 0.5 degree virus. In this case, there was a unique compartmental arthroplasty done on both sides. And unfortunately, she was overstuffed medially, leaving the lower limb in a se severe valgus both sides, 11 degree on the right lower limb, with three degree valgus on the femur and six degree valgus on the tibia. So after only two years, she developed lateral compartment pain because of the overstuffing of her medial compartment. 
if we follow our algorithm in this case, both the femur and tibia are below five degree and the combination of tibia and femur are also producing a HK below three degrees. So there is no adjustment to be performed. So we can do a true kinematic alignment in our case. This is the post-op film with post-op measurement. We achieved a, a HK post-op of zero degree, LDFA of 0.5 valgus and MPTA of 0.5 varus. So very near our goal uh, are measured on pre-op film. Kinematic alignment is not limited to primary total knee or revision of uni. You can also apply these principle for total knee arthroplasty revision. This is a patient, a woman of 57 years with a right total knee arthroplasty performed four years ago. And actually she had early failure with loosening on the tibial component. She switched into severe virus with the HK of 22 degrees. And on that side, the LDFA is nine degree virus and MPTA 13 degree virus. If we want to replicate our native anatomy during the revision of our right side, we need to assess the, uh, the bone anatomy on the native side if it's available. On our left lower limb, our HK is 14 degree virus with the LDFA of two degree valgus and MPTA of 10 degree virus. For that patient, we offered her a bilateral knee surgery in one stage, and we started with the native side to make sure that we understand her native anatomy before addressing the right lower limb. For the left lower limb, we have the LDFA at two degree valgus, so she's within the boundaries, but the MP MPTA is 10 degree varus. So we need to correct that tibial alignment to a maximum of five and the combination of the tibia five degree virus plus two degree valgus femur is below three degree of HKA. We will use these landmarks and that anatomical orientation on the left side to do the revision on the right side. So during the surgery on the right side, we follow the same principle trying to replicate the left lower limb alignment. As you can see here on the post-op radiograph, we were able to achieve most of our goals. We had a one degree virus HK on the left lower limb and two degree virus on the right lower limb. There is a slight discrepancy between the data provided during surgery within the navigation, as you can see here. And this is quite normal because we know that plane radiograph in two dimension may not be as accurate as we would want. Doing some revision total knee with uh, kinematic alignment principles, you must know that uh, it is not suitable uh, with the use of long uncemented stems because these uh, uncemented stems, uh, they connect with the femoral diaphysis and the angle between the stem and the implant is fixed at six degree on the femur and zero degree on the tibia. So I favor to use short cemented stem and try to uh, use them according to my goal of kinematic alignment. So these are a few cases I wanted to share with you to better explain the principles of restricted kinematic alignment protocol and if you want to read more, I would suggest to visit our website of the Personalized Arthroplasty Society or to read the textbook, Personalized Hip and Knee Joint Replacement, which is available open access. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next video.